Hey, this is Dreamers, and I'm Jacob. I'm Nick. And Nelson. And you are live in limbo. And so it goes, we found a sweet disaster in a river of champagne. Hi, I'm Shannon from Live in Limbo, and we're sitting here with Dreamers before their show in Buffalo tonight. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. How are you? I am we're, very wonderful. We're a little cold, bit cold. Yeah, a little bit. It's Just cold here. Cold in Buffalo tonight. Yeah. So how is the tour with the Griswolds going so far? It's amazing. It's been super fun. Uh, there's some great gentlemen from Australia who like to show us a good time. So we've been not sleeping enough, but living mm. enough for two people each. You just rolled out of bed at 4.16 p.m.? Yeah, well, we've been up for a long time, but then we just took a nap, I think, right now. We all passed out for a second. I was in bed all the way. You got to. Yeah, Jacob got to take the day off because he was not let into Canada by the Canadian authorities. Mm. Was this on purpose? No one knows. Yeah, no one knows. <laughs> but we had a friend uh, jump in at the last minute, learn all the songs, and play drums for us in Canada. So that was wow. kind of a fun little experiment. And now Jacob's been replaced. Yes. No, but he's back. He's You're back out of the band. Us. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But he got to have a whole day in the hotel, you know, just, just jacuzziing it up. Oh. Left with my thoughts. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So speaking of the tour, what do you guys say your favorite and least favorite parts of touring are? Most favorites. Everything. All of it. Playing shows, uh, meeting cool people around the world. Uh, Traveling, seeing rad places, least favorite part, nothing. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about us just waking up. I mean, we typically th sleep about three hours at a time. We kind of sleep in chunks. That's the only sort of weird part. Yeah, we're dreamers. We like to sleep, but we, we, we sleep when we're... <laughs> we don't get to sleep much. Sleep when we're dead and when we're off tour. Yeah, my least favorite thing this tour was uh, trying to get shit done and not having time to do it before I left to go to the next city. Yeah. Having no time to get shit done. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll put that as the official statement. No shit. time to get shit done. Yes. For example, I have a, an important package that was that's supposed to be here. Nobody can find it because I don't know where to send packages to because we're in a different state. Every Guys, that's just the most boring interview answer. <laughs> Those Where are, do I get my mail? Those are grown-up grown things that we don't actually have to worry about anymore now that we're rock stars. Yeah, you're rock stars. You, who cares? Get people to <laughs> find your mail for you. Yeah, exactly. Right? But my medication's in that package. Oh. Well, that's not fun. You don't want to know. Don't make me call. All right, so you guys came out with an album this uh, fall, past August, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so... I find, obviously, I've never written an album myself, but during the uh, as the process, what would you say your favorite song while you were recording the album was? And did that change towards the finished product? Mm. Um, it's really hard for us to have favorites, especially me. I don't know. Just like writing songs, I like them all in different ways. And you get so wrapped up in them that you don't even know how to judge them, really. I can remember us recording Shooting Shadows and being really stoked on it. Also, uh, Sweet Disaster was always one of my favorite songs in the beginning. If I had to pick a favorite song while we were recording our record, it would be Don't Stop Believing by Journey. Yeah. That was, my that favorite was your favorite song during that period? During that period. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. You sound like a mother describing her children. Like, I can't pick a favorite. That's I mean, how I feel. I love them all our equally. Babies. Yeah, the songs are our only babies since we have no real but if living <laughs> babies. If one of those 11 songs fell into a swimming pool, which one would you go after first? That's what you got to ask yourself. Yeah, one is so. hanging off a cliff. You have to choose. Well, luckily, I we would, put all our eggs in one basket, so we just pick up the basket. Yeah, we basically did do that. We had to let some of them drown. Those are all the B-sides. Mm. So those are the ones that didn't make the cut. You, don't even, you never even heard those ones. Oh. Well, all the other ones are the ones that we rescued from the, from drowning. The ones that you dove in after, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> this is all metaphorical. Songs cannot swim, just in case anybody... Exactly. Yes. Um, so moving on from that, if you guys individually could pick one artist, dead or alive, that you could collaborate with, who would it be? Mm. I'd pace around trying to decide between Tupac. John Lennon and Kurt Cobain. Mm. Tupac. Tupac. Uh, Iggy Pop. 
I mean, I could, I it's could possible. say, I could say, I could say Biggie just so that we could have like a Biggie pop, Biggie pop. Yeah. So we could have yeah. a, a rivalry within the band about, you know, well, Tiny Tim, Tiny Tim, I'm, Tiny uh, Tim. Yeah. I met him in an airport when I was yeah. very, very young. I don't really remember. I was too young, but he had his little ukulele with him. Yeah. yeah. My dad was like, Hey, that's Tiny Tim. Let's go say hi. And I was like, that's a scary man, dad. <laughs> father made me talk to him so you're still traumatized. still traumatized that was the day before age before cell phones too so there's no photographic proof of it probably didn't even happen yeah you'd remember it better if you had photos yeah it wasn't on snapchat <laughs> um so uh being an artist festivals are obviously a big part of the music industry if you could pick like the top three festivals dream festivals to play what would they be Ooh, we love festivals. Um, we've played some of our dream festivals already, such as Lollapalooza. Mm. That was a dream one, yeah. Um, we one for me, a personal dream for me is to play Sasquatch, because I'm from Seattle and that's Washington State, and I went there when I was young, and mm -hmm. the gorge is super cool, and so it'd be kind of a fun life goal. I don't know. Yeah, actually, strangely enough, uh, Bumbershoot, which is another Seattle festival, is kind of a big one for me. It was one of my first festivals that I went to. Mm -hmm. um, that could happen. That you could never know. Happen. Our dreams may soon. come true. It may, it may come true soon. Maybe even this year. Maybe. We Possibly. Maybe. Uh, we don't know. I feel like you're hinting. Very, very subtle and discreet there. <laughs> Do you got We are live in limbo. limbo. Yeah. Um, okay, so speaking of um, indie music, people say it's kind of like an oversaturated market. There's lots of people, uh, lots of bands trying to break There's through. A lot of people in the world. Yes, overpopulation, but that's another problem. We're not going to talk about that right now. Yeah. So, what would you say sets you apart from the other plethora of bands trying to break into the music scene? Well, our bass player is a shaved Bigfoot. I am. I'm shaved that head to toe, but I am 100% uh, Bigfoot uh, DNA. And that gives us a leg up over normal yeah, plebeian awesome. humans. Mm. Changes the way our bass sounds. It does. Makes the bass lower and deeper. Sexier. Yeah. More booty. I, I, I can hit a low G. Uh, none of these other, none of these other you know, alt bands can hit a yeah. difference, really. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know. It's an oversaturated market, yeah, because anyone can make a song on their laptop. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. All three of it's, us can sing in three-part harmony. Yeah, it's true. We do it all the time. I think we spend more time at it than other people. I think that's the only difference. Oh, okay. So Bigfoot and singing in harmonies. And I smell like roses. We have really great fans too. And I'm not going to talk smack on any other band's fans, but ours are pretty amazing. Are better. They're better. You guys, are, if you're watching this, you're better than all the other band's fans. So. <laughs> You're the best at everything. Um, so I kind of talked about this earlier, how we're kind of living in this age of like cell phones and whatnot. And um, <laughs> I guess, and we've moved away from like buying records and moved more into like streaming music with Spotify and Apple Music and whatnot. As an artist, what is your opinion on uh, the streaming world? Oh yeah, we think it's just, it's just inevitable. Technology always changes music, and we're along for the ride. I think there's always a way to uh, make money. Though we're not in the record sales boom, gold rush era anymore. Mm -hmm. But the world adapts, and artists make money from live music now and from syncs and all this other yeah. stuff. So Car commercials. I like it. Yeah, let's get weird. Let's get into the future. Yeah. Sounds cool. We're not conservative. We want to move forward. We want to progress. Just keep, yeah, I can't look back, right? Exactly. You can. Yeah. That's what that's what art is all about. Yeah. Changing and reinventing. Exactly. Um, I know I use Spotify and Apple Music to find like 99% of the music that I find. Um, what, yeah. is it, what is your favorite way of finding music? Is it? Yeah, I use Spotify. It's pretty amazing that actually that you can just like be like, I want to hear this one song. And then you just type it and you hear it no matter mm -hmm. what it is. Pretty much anything. They have yeah. just about every song. Yeah. So I don't know. All that's cool. Spotify is great. Even YouTube, I do that sometimes and uh, just leave a comment. <laughs> I just, you know, you know I'm always troll like this. Ever. Do you ever like to troll on YouTube? I like to leave angry political comments on videos that have nothing to do with That's uh, my politics. favorite thing to do. Do you do thumbs up? <laughs> yeah. 
I do a lot of thumbs ups actually, but then but then I'll do I'll do it like I'll try to be confusing. I'll leave a thumbs up, but then I'll put a comment that's just like this is the worst video I've ever seen. <laughs> down your own comment. Exactly. Exactly, and so that thumbs like, down. What does this guy really mean? Do you leave hate on your own YouTube videos? Yeah, most oh, of the neg awesome. most of the negative comments are actually from us. We would say that once we have haters on YouTube, that's when we actually made it. Yeah. No. Exactly. Because. If you're just, uh, you know, your friends commenting, they're all going to be like, oh, you guys are great. That's awesome. I'm going to go home and comment you guys suck on your YouTube yeah, videos. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Give a nice haters, haters, thumbs down. Haters going to hate. I always say that. If, somebody, if somebody's hating on your stuff, it means that, uh, you know, you're, you're getting where you, where you want to be. People yeah. are, at that point, people are being subjected to your music as opposed to choosing to listen to it. And that's really what we want here. We want people to have we want to hear force it. people. We want people to have to hear it whether they want to or not. Every time they <laughs> walk into a Starbucks. So. <laughs> Very specifically, only Starbucks. Yeah, or a grocery store. Every time you go in the bathroom at the grocery Tim store. Hortons. Tim Hortons. Yeah. If you're in Canada. Or you're Seattle's in, best. In Canada. Yeah. I was here in Maroon 5 in the grocery store. Exactly. Or Taylor Swift. Or Taylor. Taylor. You hear Taylor Swift everywhere. You can't escape Taylor Swift. Tay Tay. Tay Tay. You don't know her? No. You don't you know who oh, Taylor Swift is. Right. Tay Tay Swift Swift. Taylor. You can't pretend you don't know who Taylor Swift is. You're not living under a little rock. He doesn't go to the grocery don't store. Talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of offended. Like I love Taylor. <laughs> she she, uh, kin? she yeah. next of kin? She's not a big foot. No. no, I am not related to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Thanks for asking though. Thanks for asking. Uh, so we're going to wrap this up. Um, and <laughs> These ruffians. Oh, Jesus. I think, that, I think uh, that was a Griswold. That was a Griswold. A wild Griswold appeared. <laughs> um, so where do, you, where, where do you guys go from here? Where do you want to see yourself in the next five, ten years? Um, preferably alive. <clears throat> That's a good one. Preferably in mm -hmm. a state of euphoric transcendence. Mm -hmm. uh, Busy bee. A busy bee. We want to play shows in outer space on the moon. Okay. We want to do everything humanly possible. We want to meet everyone in the world. Oh, become friends with them all. Beard. Grow. Hopefully, he'll be able to grow a beard by then. My brother told me by the time I'm 30, I'll be able to grow some facial hair. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, in reality, we want to just live as dreamers and be people who can spend our whole lives thinking, dreaming, creating, and uh, looking forward. To the next thing good answer there i really like the part about the moon you know they did just discover seven new planets yeah exoplanets maybe they're my favorite type of planet is it mm -hmm. i'm glad you have a favorite type of planet <laughs> i like dwarf planets they don't get enough love but yeah poor but pluto Exo pluto exoplanets are good too <laughs> yeah yeah okay well thank you so much for sitting down with us sir. thank you